I'm Dan Higgins and I'd like to welcome you to Kansas State University where I serve as a professor in the Department of Chemistry. In this video, my co-authors Takashi Ito and Kan Hua Tran Ba and I will be introducing you to the Perspectives article that we recently published in the Journal of Physical Chemistry Letters. We've entitled our perspective, Following Single Molecules to a Better Understanding of Self-Assembled One-Dimensional Nanomaterials. In this article, we highlight a number of recently published studies in which wide-field fluorescence video microscopy has been used to observe and track the motions of fluorescent dye molecules diffusing through one-dimensional nanomaterials. Now, the materials studied to date include a wide variety of both organic and inorganic nanoassemblies. Materials like lyotropic liquid crystal mesophases, surfactant templated mesoporous metal oxides, and phase separated block copolymer monoliths and films. In single molecule tracking studies, we use wide field fluorescence video microscopy to record images of samples doped to very low levels, nanomolar concentrations are lower, with highly fluorescent dye molecules. This video here shows one representative example. Hi, my name is Hanwha Tranba and I will introduce you now to a wide field fluorescence microscope setup we use to record single molecule tracking da data. This system uses a 488 and 532 nanometer laser as an excitation source. The system is built on an inverted AP illumination microscope of Nikon. The microscope uses a high numerical aperture 100 time oil emergent objective. As a detector, we are using a high speed EM CCD camera. In many of our experiments, the images were recorded without any polarizer in front of the camera. In some others, such as in the polarization dependent experiment, an image splitter is, is just put in front of the camera. This image splitter can separate uh, emitted fluorescence into two separate images having horizontal and vertical polarization. Once we have the wide field fluorescence videos, we use computer-based tracking software to both precisely locate the spots produced by the single molecules and link them into trajectories. In this slide, we see four representative examples of trajectories. Two molecules which are immobile and two which are mobile and exhibiting Brownian-like motion along one dimension. In our studies, we're most interested in characterizing the level of order and organization of the nanopores or nanostructures. So what we're going to do is take one-dimensional trajectories like these and fit them to a line using orthogonal regression methods. Now these fits provide a number of very useful parameters. The most important of these is the trajectory orientation. And once we have data from a large number of molecules, we can take that data and construct histograms that depict the distribution of nanopore or nanostructure alignments. In this particular histogram you see we get a distribution that's peaked sharply at zero and it tells you initially that this material is particularly well ordered. We've used single molecule tracking methods as a means to explore the origins of disorder in spin-coated surfactant templated mesoporous silica films. Shown here is a video and the associated trajectories derived from that video. Close inspection of these data reveals that this region of the sample is comprised of no fewer than three distinct domains. We've colored the trajectories associated with each domain as red, black, and blue lines. The histograms prepared from these trajectory data are shown above here again in red, blue, and black. We notice from these histograms that each is relatively narrow, indicative of the fact that each domain is relatively well ordered. We conclude then that disorder in this particular sample arises from the domaining of the sample, its polycrystallinity. Hi, I'm Takashi Ito, Associate Professor of Chemistry at Kansas State University. We used SMT and the Ulsoran regression methods to demonstrate millimeter distance scale alignment of cylinder-shaped broccopolymer domains by solvent vapor penetration. In this study, we prepared PSBPO films sandwiched between two glass substrates and let solvent vapor penetrate through the polymer film. We could visualize the structure of cylinder-shaped PO domains 
by tracking the motion of these dye molecules that preferentially partition to the PEO domains. We found 1,4 dioxane vapors could induce domain alignment in the direction of solvent vapor penetration, as shown by these one dimensional dye motion. In contrast, benzene and toluene vapors could not induce domain alignment, as shown by these 2D dye motions. Importantly, we could quantitatively discriminate between 1D and 2D motions, assess domain alignment and order, and estimate domain radius by using the orthogonal regression methods for the analysis of individual trajectories. Most recently, we've also used polarization selective wide field video microscopy to simultaneously follow both the translational and orientational motions of probe molecules incorporated in 1D nanochannels. Here, we see a video showing paralene diamond single molecules diffusing within spin coated mesoporous silica films. The two panels in this video show data obtained from a single region of the sample for light polarized alternately in the vertical and horizontal directions. As is apparent from this video data, single molecule emission is strongly polarized along the long axis of the nanopores, indicating that the orientational motions of the molecules are highly confined. However, quantitative analysis of the single molecule tracking data demonstrates that there is indeed some depolarization of the fluorescence indicating that the molecules exhibit some orientational motions. We view these motions as a wobbling of the molecules about their long axis within the cylindrical mesopores, as shown in this cartoon video on the right, where we see the molecules wandering up and down the long axis of the nanochannels by Brownian-like motion as they wobble and tilt within the channels. By measuring the level of emission polarization from each molecule, we can determine the maximum angle of wobbling in each case. In a final set of studies, we investigated the orientational wobbling motions of four different paralene diamond dyes of different lengths. These dye molecules are shown here, and their lengths span the range from 1.4 nanometers up to 2.8 nanometers. In all four cases, the wobbling motions of these dyes were found to be highly confined. These histograms on the left show the distributions of maximum wobbling angles in each case. Using the model given down here, we can determine the accessible cavity diameters um, for each single molecule. We can also determine the ensemble average cavity diameter, and we've done so down here with this plot. The value obtained is just over one nanometer. This value is, of course, much smaller than the 3.7 nanometer diameter expected from the silica nanochannels themselves. This discrepancy arises from nanostructuring within the surfactant-filled mesopores. My co-authors and I hope that you get a chance to read our perspectives article and that you find something useful in it that can help with your own studies.